I want to read to you, actually I'm going to repeat what Colin and Evelyn did um, and read to you the Christmas story from the Gospel of John. Um, so listen now to the Word of God. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God, and God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. He came to the very world he created, but the world did not recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. Amen. So as I said a, a moment ago, um, you know, we don't normally think of that as being the Christmas story, but it really is. Um, normally we think of, you know, the shepherds and the angels and all, that's, you know, that's I have us read the, the gospel according to Luke every, every year because it's just such a beautiful story. But as familiar as it can be, um, that story's a little weird, isn't it? I mean, you've got angels appearing to shepherds and you've got babies born in, uh, to stables and then you know, the first bed is a feed trough. And I know that you know, all of these details are so familiar we don't even really think about how just bizarre and strange they are. But the strangeness, um, I think the strangest part of the whole story is the heart of the story itself, which is that God becomes a human being to dwell among us. And that's why I wanted to read to you the gospel according to John, who makes it very clear from the very first verse, where he says, in the beginning, the word already existed. The word was with God, and the word was God. And then in verse 14, it says that the Word became human and made His home among us. Now, if you believe that God can create the universe out of nothing, then I suppose um, you can believe that God, if He so chose, could become a human being. But the question is, why would He? Why did He do it? And the kind of human being that he became. He didn't, wasn't born into a palace with a bunch of servants and a bunch of soldiers to do his bidding. Instead, he's born into this poor peasant family. And he, you know, he spends his life just sort of wandering from village to village and doing some healings and some teachings. And, you know, the question is, what, what was the point? Why? Now, those of you who know the Bible, you know that it probably has something to do with the mess that the world is in. That this world, yes, it's full of beauty, and it's full of all kinds of beautiful things, but this world is also filled with a lot of pain. Um, and in fact, if you're somebody that struggles to believe in God, that's, that may be the primary reason why. You know, if, if God is good and God made the world, then why is there so much pain and suffering and evil? Why, do, why are people free to do all of these awful things to each other? And it doesn't help that a, a lot of times Christians make it sound as if, you know, all the pain and the suffering is somehow part of God's plan, right? You know, that all the awful things that people do, it's all a part of a big plan. Well, that's not actually what the New Testament says. It's not actually what any part of the Bible says. That the Bible actually says is that when people do awful things to each other, they're actually violating God's plan. They're actually going against God's plan. That God doesn't like it. But then the question becomes, well, why doesn't God do something about it? And that's the point of the Christmas story. That God 
enters into the world as a human being to do something about this dark world. But then the next question, and you can tell I'm a person that likes to ask questions, and this is just how my mind works. The question is, well, um, couldn't God have worked a little bit faster and been, a, you know, come on a little bit stronger? You know, I mean, if the world is such a mess and God doesn't like it, why didn't he just come in and just, you know, clean house? Why didn't he come in and just by force put an end to all the bad stuff and, uh, you know, make the world right? It's a pretty good question. I like that question. Um, well, to answer that question, you know, how does a baby born in a manger help to put the world right? Um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to tell you a story. And I didn't make this story up. This was a story that, uh, as far as I know, the first person to tell this story was a favorite pastor of mine. He was a man by the name of Athanasius. He lived about 300 years after Jesus, so 1,700 years ago, long time ago. And it, probably you've never heard of Athanasius because he lived so long ago, but in his day, he was very famous. He was the um, chief pastor, so to speak, in, um, in the largest city, Alexandria, uh, in Egypt, which was an uh, a very important position to hold. And we, have, we still have a lot of the things that Athanasius wrote. We even know a little bit about what he looked like, that he was very short and that he was very darkly complected because his enemies referred to him as the black dwarf. I say... Wow, why did he have enemies? Well, because he lived in a very contentious time. And there were a lot of people, people who went to church, people who were leaders in the church, who did not believe that Jesus was God in human form. They believed that, I don't know, he was an angel or he was sort of this semi-divine person, but Really, God become a human being? Oh, they struggled to, with that idea just as much as we do. And Athanasius was instrumental in keeping the biblical faith true and constant in front of... So he, he played this huge role in history, even if you've never heard of him. And he's a favorite of mine. And um, he wanted his people to understand why God becoming a human being in the humble way that he did, makes all the difference in the world. And, you know, his people had questions, well, you know, why is the world so messed up? And why, what, what is God doing about it? And so one Christmas Eve, he told them this story. And now I share it with you. And it goes like this. Once upon a time, there was a powerful king who ruled over many cities. He was gentle, and he was kind, and he was amazingly wise. Um, but in one of his more distant cities, um, the people started to make money by doing what was wrong. And they were worried that the king would interfere. And as their hatred for the king grew, they decided to convince the city to rebel against the king, to throw off his rule, to throw off his law, and that's what they did. And as they threw off the king's law, violence and fear and crime and all kinds of things became commonplace as people took advantage of each other and life became cheap. Now the king heard about his lost city and it grieved him. But what could he do? I mean, he could send his soldiers in to recapture the city, but he knew that if he did that, the people would fight. And many of those he loved would be killed. And even when he conquered the city, he knew that the people would only submit to him out of fear. They would still hate him. And so the king came up with a different plan. He took off his royal robes and he dressed himself in rags and he entered the city unannounced. Nobody recognized him. The king went and he lived uh, by the city garbage dump. 
And he began to make a living fixing broken pottery and old furniture. And as people would come out to do business with them, he would ask them about their life and he would talk to them. And the longer he spent in the city, the more the people began to realize how good and kind and wise he was. And they began to go out and seek him just for his company. And they would share their problems and their fears and their hopes, and the king would give them advice. And as he gained their confidence, he began to tell them that the rebels had misled them that the king had a better way to live, and it was what he was teaching them. And first, just a few people believed and accepted him, but the movement grew and grew until finally the city itself regretted that they had rebelled against the king. But they felt like they were stuck because if they surrendered to the king, they were worried that the king would punish them. And so they just kind of felt like they had no hope. And it was at that moment that the king revealed who he was, took off his rags and put on his royal robes. And the king accomplished through his loving presence what was impossible to do by brute force. He had won back his city. Our scripture said that Jesus came into the world that he had created and the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But to all who believed in him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. This city in which we live, this this world, is still in rebellion against its rightful king. And it's full of darkness. And yes, the king could come by brute force and put an end to all of it, but he knew that if he did that, many of the ones that he loved would die. And so he came up with a different plan, and he put aside his royal robes, and he took the form of a human being, and he came and he lived among us. And he went from village to village, showing that there was a better way to live so that he could win back the world that he loves. This Christmas Eve, every single one of us has a choice. Will you reject the beggar king dressed in rags or will you accept him and let him transform you into a child of God? That is what Christmas is all about. Amen.